Hey everyone, how's it going? So what am I working on today? Got my caravan in the shop finally uh, to do that exhaust leak. Let me show you. But I won't actually show you, but you can hear it. You can hear that? Blah, 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 blah. And it gets worse under acceleration, like when the engine's under load. We're also going to be redoing the front brakes on this, but that'll be a separate video. I'll explain that in a separate video. So what is the exhaust leak? Well, it's been leaking for quite a while and it just got progressively worse over time. But this is the part that's actually the problem. This upper flange, the original factory uh, flex pipe that is in this flange is what's leaking. As you can see, I've had this for quite a while. I got this on Amazon probably two years ago, maybe even three, when I think first started leaking, and I just never got around to it. So here it is. The problem is you got to weld it in place. If you want to, if you don't want to do this, you have to replace the entire catalytic converter. Why do that? I don't need to. There's not an issue with the cat. So 200 and almost 50,000 miles now, and cat's still going good. So we're going to leave the cat alone other than we have to cut that out. So let me get this set up. Let's get it up in the air and I'll show you what we're going to do. All right. So first thing we're going to do <clears throat> before I put this thing completely up in the air is we're going to disconnect the battery. So let me show you something here. Now the rule of thumb is always disconnect negative first. So I had the tool reversed. Negative first, then positive. Going back together, you go positive, then negative. Why is that? Okay. The reason for that is on a car, and this is the only reason. So I, I can't think of any other reason, to be totally honest with you. If you know of another reason, let me know. The only reason I could think of is to disconnect the negative first is if you were to go disconnect a positive, and let's say you got a wrench on there, and you took the wrench and you wound up hitting something on the body, guess what? You just created a short. So with the negative disconnected first, short can't happen. The only thing is, if I'm not mistaken, uh, aviation mechanics are told to disconnect positive first. And the reason for that is because capacitors and stuff will, will contain the charge still. So if you went over to, like, let's say the alternator or whatever, and you ground it out going from here to the case with the positive still connected, you know, doing it this way, negative, first, uh, negative disconnected first, positive connected, you can actually short out a capacitor, supposedly. If I, I could be wrong with that, but that's what I, I believe. Um, so anyway, it, if you don't have a chance of shorting anything out, is it going to hurt disconnect that positive first? No, I've done it a million times. You're not going to hurt it. But like I said, there's always a possibility that if you, leave, if you disconnect the positive first, you could hit something and ground something out, and then, of course, you're going to have a bigger problem. So, all right, let's put this up in the air. Okay, so here we are underneath the vehicle. And if you look up there, there's that piece right there. And yeah, that's the one that's notorious for breaking. I also believe I have a cracked manifold, but I'm not concerned about that. It's, I don't think it's my main problem. I know that that's my main problem right there, that that piece is broken in two. Um, so now, Here's the big problem. This exhaust is all one piece. So what do I do? What do I do? We go crazy with a sawzall. That's what we do. Uh, I'm going to sawzall this thing and then I'm going to have to weld it back together. That's really the only thing I can do. Uh, I guess I could get a sleeve. I don't know if I really want to do that. but. Let me figure out exactly what I'm going to do. Because trying to get those... Oh, that's the other thing, too. I am not going to be able to record getting those bolts off. There's just no way I'm going to be able to record this. I'm going to try... Maybe if I cut the exhaust off first. Yeah, you see it right under there? Maybe, uh... I don't know. Let me think of a plan of attack here real quick. And we'll figure this out. 
All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sawzall this thing right here. Now, the other thing too is that flange is clocked in a certain position. AC drain is dripping over here. Um, that flange is clocked in a certain position. So the problem is I'm gonna have to get the flange mounted up on the exhaust, mark it exactly to how it's gotta sit, and then I'm gonna have to tack weld it to this pipe, then do a final weld, then I'm gonna have to put it up in place, weld this, drop it back down so I can weld the top of it. Yeah, it's gonna be a little bit of a procedure. Uh, but what are you gonna do? I had welded the exhaust back there because the, the slip fit uh, thing had rotted off at one point in time. So, all right, let's, uh, let's get happy with a sawzall. I decided to go a little bit further down only because otherwise I gotta cut this and I gotta, uh, this support, because this is like a support for this pipe here. So, it may not be pretty, but it'll be what it is. My battery might be dead. Hang on. Either that or it's just it's a smaller battery. try to figure out how I'm gonna get I don't want that O2 is gonna pop out but I gotta try to figure out how I'm gonna get those bolts out of there like I said I don't think I can even film this because I don't know what you're gonna see all right let me show you something here real quick so I'm sure many of you know what this is it's an angle grinder and you can put these little pads in the end here now what I got to do is because I don't have a straight uh, cutter in other words they make cutting tool that goes straight and has, this way you can get into like tighter spots. Most of them are like going this direction with it. What I usually do is I'll take a cutoff wheel like this, I'll put it in place, take the cookie, put it through, and lock it in. So now I can actually cut like this. Uh, yeah, you're not gonna be able to like absolutely load into it because it'll start to spin, but to cut certain things off, yeah, it works perfectly. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. You're not going to be able to see anything, actually. But I'm basically I'm taking the tool, sticking it up top here, and I'm going to slice off the nut and bolt. You can even see it. doing here and then you'll understand if you look see how I'm slicing into that nut so now I can actually break that thing off so I don't want to sit there and have you watch each and every one of these it's just gonna be boring uh, some of these I could probably get off with a twist socket or whatever but let me get this one out first all right so as you can see I cut the head off that one I cut the nut off that one uh, now the top ones I have easier access to from this side so I should be able to get a twist socket on there because I think the heads are just rotted off. So let me do that. I disconnected the O2. I'm not going to bother trying to pull it out of the pipe. Uh, and you notice I forgot to tighten that motor mount bolt on my own car. See, I do make mistakes. The shield, I tried to get it out. It is not coming out. So it's going to just sit there for a while. Uh, yeah, but let's try to get the rest of those bolts out. All right, I had to cut that top one on this side too. The other one I was able to get out. This one, that ear on the back side there is supposed to like lock it in place, but it kept spinning. So, 
This whole thing now should just come right out. Okay. Okay, hang on a second. Okay, so now with the cat out, here, this pipe is going to fit in here like this. But if you notice, see the difference in length? This is why Chrysler's always a problem with this. Um, yeah, so what I may have to do, and it all depends, I may have to lengthen this end, which means I would then have to cut this end shorter and weld it back together. So Chrysler can be a little bit of a pain in the neck when it comes to stuff like this. So yeah, uh, I'm just going to put it out like that length. But let me see, I'm going to cut this off right now and let's see where we end up. Actually, I'm going to put you on this side and make my life a little bit easier. Obviously not a job you're going to be doing in your driveway. This is something that you need welders for and stuff like that. I mean, if you got a welder, yeah, sure. But yeah, you see, this is a completely different size, unfortunately. So, if you look inside, you can actually see where the other pipe comes in. So I might cut off a little more of the snout of that thing. Yeah, I'm, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut off the snout of the cat. So. Let me do that. more batteries hang on a second all right I was using the little batteries the first one was already dead but I got a big bad boy on there right now difference in power all right so now this still won't fit inside but it's getting close it is close I might have a pipe expander that'll fit that so if I can I'll just gonna expand it this way I can actually telescope this thing inside let me see if I can find it all right, so I got this old school pipe expander. I've had this thing shoot since 
1990 maybe, something like that. Maybe even before then. Gotta be careful because I'm hitting the, the uh, inside of the cat. Almost there. Look at that. Look at that. I will take that. I absolutely will take that. Because I can weld that all back together now. All right, so now what I got to do is I have to test fit this up in place. And I have to mark this to this so I know exactly where everything is sitting. Because like I said, this is indexed. If this was just a straight piece of pipe, I would care less. But because, or I, you know, just get it close. But because of this thing, because this thing has to turn, it's got to be in the right spot. Okay, so there I got that flange up in place. I just put the screws in by hand just to hold it for right now. So now, what I want to do... Can you see this? I'll get the cat pipe up in place. And actually, you could come down just slightly to line up to this pipe. So now, what I need to do is I need to get something to mark up there. So, hold on a minute, let me get my marker. All right, so I got a paint pen. And I've seen on the internet, they make these clamps that you could put around exhaust pipes like this, and or any kind of pipe, basically, and it'll clamp it together. And then it has open spots, so this way you can weld it. And I was like, man, that's a fantastic idea, actually. So I may actually look into getting something like that. But now, I'm underneath here and I'm marking this thing as best I can. In two slots. Why in two spots, might you say? You can see how much it moves. I uh, want to try to weld it back in the same spot. So let me get all of this out of there and see how that came out. Sorry if this light is affecting you, but I need it to see. Okay, so now I realize too, when I use that type of a marker, it's smeared all over here. So what I did do was, once I realized that, I just put it back up in place and I used a Sharpie in two spots. But now, it's a good thing I still got those paint marks there because I know it's going to be in this position. See how it lines up with the paint mark? But I have to get... That mark there, and that top mark there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack weld that thing in place, and then I'm going to clean it real quick. I should have cleaned it first. I didn't. I can't tell you the last time I really welded anything. It's been a while. So just didn't think about it. So let me do that. Let me get this ready. Let me tack weld it. Okay, so two quick zaps. One right there. One right there. So now I can test fit it up in the car. Make sure it fits. I'm not going to film me welding this because I don't know if the camera can handle the intensity of the of the um, welding. So let me just make sure this is going to fit in the car first and then we're going to go from there. Okay, so the top is kind of in place. I'm just going to center. Yep, there we go. As soon as I center the flange, it lines up the way it's supposed to. So I'm fine with that. Let's take this out. We're going to clean that up real quick, and then we're going to do our final weld. So there we go. I cleaned up the edge as good as I'm going to. Um, so now, basically, I'm just going to tack it in place. I am not a professional welder. I am not even... I, don't, I wouldn't even consider myself a very good welder. I know how to weld, and I get by. Definitely not a professional welder. Um, this is what I got. This is the welder we have here at the shop. This is Yes Welder. And this is the reason that I bought that plasma cutter... The Yes Welder Plasma Cutter was because of how well this works. So, and it, it, the pricing wasn't bad. I don't remember what the pricing was, but the pricing wasn't bad. All things considered, it was one of the least expensive ones out on the market. And this one's 220 and 110. So, 
All right, let me weld that up. Like I said, I'm not gonna film it. I'm not sure if the intensity of the light is gonna hurt the uh, camera, and I don't wanna do that. It's the only one I got. All right, so it's welded up. So, like I said, I'm not a professional welder, but I do pretty good. Um, if you are a professional welder, what am I, how can I make this better? I think I have it set too high heat-wise, but I'm not even sure. Anyway, so let me know if you are a professional welder. All right, let's get this. Actually, I gotta let that cool a little bit because that's hot as all get out. Um, then we're gonna get this thing up and place, bolt this up, and then we're gonna weld that up. Uh, what I'll do first is I'll grind down the edge of the pipe so this way I have like a little bit of a valley for the weld to fit, uh, fill into. All right, so now that this is cooled off, we get this up in place. Putting two of the bolts in by hand. Alright. So now that that's in by hand, now I can weld this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack that together like that in a couple of spots. Then I'm going to take the hangers out so the exhaust can come down as far as possible so I can weld all the way around this pipe. Uh, once again, I'm not going to film it only because I don't know if it's going to damage my camera or not. Now I'll be the first to admit, welding over my head, I'm terrible at it. Absolutely terrible. But it's sealed. It's kind of bubble gummy. But what are you going to do? I'm terrible at it. Now i got to lower the exhaust. But I'll admit I'm terrible at it. <clears throat> so... If you want a professional or a really good welding job done from underneath, don't come to me because <laughs> I, I suck at it pretty much. Um, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these hangers out. And let me show you something actually. Here, you ever seen a pair of these? They usually work very well with this. It gets you to go through. Now, as you see, I didn't put any kind of lubrication on that thing at all, so it's a little tight. But there, that gets it all. Because I know sometimes you fight with these things like there's no tomorrow. So, all right, let me drop the other end of this, uh, all the other hangers. So this way I could drop that end and I can weld the top of the pipe, which I should be able to do much better than the weld they did there, because that's terrible, but whatever. Okay, there you see the exhaust hanging all the way down. And <clears throat> I welded it on the top, and there, you see, <laughs> my weld is a heck of a lot better. Whenever I got a weld over my head, I'm terrible at it. Always have been, but it's sealed up, so I'm happy with that, and it's good and all in one piece. So let me hang this exhaust back up where it needs to go. What I'm going to do is spray some WD-40 or something in there, uh, whatever I have, and then let's get the, everything hung back up where it needs to go. All right, so I got a screw jack over here. So let me start to put this thing up in place. I should have sprayed those hangers up before I even tried taking it apart. It would have made my life a little bit easier. But hindsight is 2020. couple more. 
out here. Let me reposition the jack. Yeah, about five years ago, the original gloss brought out. Like I said, this was a New York vehicle, too, so keep that in mind. So it was a, in a rust area. So the original exhaust rotted out, and then where the pipes came together over here, it just completely rotted away, so I had to sleeve it and everything else. But, so for five years, it's been fine. I'm the type of welder where if I have a good welder, a good welder makes me look good. <clears throat> this welder works pretty darn good, but it's still not going to save me from the underside welding, which I am terrible at. I did this stuff at the body shop when I replaced that exhaust. So that underside welding I did over on this side, which looks pretty good, uh, it was the welder that made me look good. It wasn't my amazing abilities as a welder. Uh, okay, well you get the idea. Let me get that in place and um, then we're going to hook up the flange. Alright, so back at this end, there's the flange. You can see I'm putting the bolts and hardware in. Uh, there again, really I can't film this, so it's kind of pointless. But you get the idea? Catch everything, bolt it up, tighten it down. Make sure it's centered, you know, like as you're tightening it down, make sure you're centering everything. Uh, this way everything's just in proper line. Um, or in proper alignment, I should say. All right, let me get this done, and then let's start it up, and let's listen to it. Oh, I was able to get the rest of that shield out. Okay, so everything's in place. O2 is connected. Bolts are tight. Exhaust itself is tight. I had taken the shield out. I didn't mention that before. It's just one screw up here and one screw up here, and that's it. Uh, yeah, so let's let this down. I didn't mention the reason for disconnecting the battery is when you're welding on a vehicle, if you have everything connected, you can uh, create like a surge and stuff like that, and you can ruin stuff. You can, you know, short out computers and stuff. I've seen it happen. If you disconnect the battery, there's no complete circuit for anything. So the likelihood of shorting something out or burning up a module, very unlikely. So that's the reason for disconnecting the battery letting it down. All right. So now one thing I did notice was this O2 for this upper, it like rests right on the exhaust. I don't know how long it's been like that. Probably been like that for quite a while. See how close it gets down there? because there used to be a heat shield there, but it's been fine, so I'm just going to leave it alone. All right, let's just get, let's reconnect the battery. Let's tighten that up. Hang on. Just had to get my tools. Okay. So now, hopefully, she's quieter than when she came in. Let's find out. Actually, let me stick it in park. Wow. Oh, you hear that noise? Or... That drove me nuts for the longest time trying to figure out what that is. That's actually the PCB valve. Why? I don't know. I originally thought it was a front pump and the transmission doing that. But no, it's a PCB valve. When you get just the right temperature, right humidity, right everything else, the PCB valve will do that. It's been doing that for years. But, all right, so it's nice and quiet. Let's go up in the air. I can hear a little leak, probably from that cracked exhaust manifold. But let's put it up here. All right. <clears throat> so we're up in the air. It sounds quiet. I don't really hear anything. That manifold does have a crack in it. I saw it before. Uh if you can see it from here. I know it's got a crack. I did see it once before. Maybe I saw it from up top. I don't know. Okay. But 
even the bubble gum is not leaking, so that's good. I can't feel any leaks here. I don't hear any leaks, so that's all good. All right, I'm happy with that. Probably get a little torque back too, because believe it or not, this thing lost some torque when that when that pipe completely let go. It had a leak for the longest time, and then it just completely let go. Um, and I actually did notice like a torque loss. So eh, we'll find out when we drive it home tonight. Uh, okay, next video I'm going to make is I'm going to do these brakes again. Uh, if you recall, I just did them a couple months back, um, but they wind up they're pulsating like crazy, and uh, it's wearing the front brakes like prematurely. This thing's always gone through brakes, um, but what happened there too was they didn't have the gold pads that I normally buy. They only had like the inexpensive cheapies, and um, they get, I had bought those at the time because they needed to do brakes. So Advanced Auto Parts was nice enough to warranty the brakes. So, and I was able to upgrade to the gold pads because they had them now. Um, I just paid the price difference, no big deal. Um, so, but anyway, that's another video. All right, hopefully you got something out of that. A lot of people ask about these gloves too. These are uh, Microflex. Microflex? I'll put a link in the description. Diamond Grip Microflex. These things. So I'll put a link in the description for that. Um, all right, that's it. Hopefully you got something out of my videos. If you already hit that like button, if you could please subscribe. All right, guys, have a great day. Keep wrenching.